Today, we're taking an in-depth look at one of the most unique battleship designs ever built, the Nelson class. From her all-forward guns to the towering octopoidal superstructure, every part of HMS Nelson was shaped by innovation, careful calculation, and the strict limits of the Washington Naval Treaty. Before we dive in, we want to thank you for watching our videos. Your support allows us to continue exploring the fascinating history of naval engineering, iconic warships, and the bold ideas that made them stand out. In this video, we're focusing solely on the design philosophy, armament, armor, and unique choices that made Nelson unlike any other battleship. This isn't a story of battles or campaigns, it's a story of how a ship was imagined, calculated, and built to push the limits of naval design. What makes the Nelson class so compelling isn't just her size or firepower, it's the sheer ingenuity of her design. Her all-forward main battery immediately grabs attention, and her octopoidal superstructure, nicknamed the Queen Anne's Mansions, gives her a silhouette unlike any other battleship. For enthusiasts, these features make her instantly recognizable, even decades after she was built. But it's not just about appearance. Nelson represents a careful balance of compromise and innovation. Designers had to work within strict treaty limits, and every choice, from gun placement to armor distribution, was a carefully calculated decision. Seeing how these constraints were turned into practical solutions allows people to appreciate the clever engineering behind her design. To some, she is elegant and beautiful. There's a certain symmetry and decisiveness in her forward-focused layout, a boldness in her massive towers, and a confident stance in the water that gives her character. It was the early 1920s. The Great War is over, and nations are trying to prevent another naval arms race. For the Royal Navy, that meant working under strict limits imposed by the Washington Naval Treaty. Only two new battleships could be built, and each had to stay under 35,000 tons standard displacement. That number wasn't just a guideline, it was a hard ceiling. For the designers, it defined every decision, from hull length to turret placement, from armor thickness to machinery layout. Every ton counted, and every compromise had to be measured. Inside the design office of the Director of Naval Construction, Eustace Tennyson D. Aincourt and his team faced that challenge head-on. They studied cancelled pre-war designs, like the G3 and N3 battleships, not failures, but simply too large for treaty limits. The question was clear, how could they take the best ideas from those designs, triple turrets, massive guns, strong armor, and shrink them into a battleship that stayed within the treaty's weight restrictions? From that challenge emerged a new concept, known internally as O3, which would become HMS Nelson. And here's where the design starts to get radical. Nelson's most striking innovation was her all-forward main battery. Traditional battleships had guns spread fore and aft, which stretched the armored citadel along the hull and forced compromises in protection. Nelson's designers did something bold, they put all nine 16-inch guns in three triple turrets in the forward bow. Turrets A and B formed a super-firing pair, with B mounted slightly higher so both could fire over the bow. Turret C sat just behind them, still forward of the superstructure. This arrangement meant that in a line-ahead formation or during a pursuit, all nine guns could bear on a target ahead, delivering a devastating concentrated salvo. The all-forward layout also allowed for a shorter, denser armored citadel. By concentrating the heavy guns in one place, the designer saved weight that could then be used for thicker armor over magazines, machinery spaces, and barbettes, while non-essential areas could be lightly protected or left unarmored. Nelson's hull was carefully proportioned to balance firepower, protection, and treaty limits. She measured 709 feet in length with a beam of 106 feet, designed to fit within existing British dry docks. Her standard displacement was around 34,000 tons, with a fully loaded displacement exceeding 40,000. Inside, she carried two Brown Curtis geared steam turbines powered by eight Admiralty three drum boilers, driving two propeller shafts. 
This gave her about 45,000 shaft horsepower and a top speed of roughly 23 knots, sufficient to hold the line in battle. The two-shaft arrangement saved weight compared to a four-shaft system, allowing more mass for armor and weaponry. The machinery layout was also optimized to complement her unusual gun placement. Boiler rooms were located behind the engine rooms, which allowed the funnel to be set back, keeping smoke away from the forward superstructure and helping maintain visibility for fire control. Above the deck, Nelson's superstructure immediately sets her apart. Tall, blocky, and multi-leveled, it's often described as octopoidal, a name that evokes the way it spreads out like multiple arms stacked together. This wasn't for looks. Every level had a purpose, fire control towers, spotting stations, command posts, communication centers. From here, officers could oversee the main battery, coordinate the secondary guns, and monitor anti-aircraft defenses, all while remaining heavily protected under armor. The nickname came from the fact that, from a distance, the layered superstructure resembled a grand London apartment block, tall, angular, and unmistakably imposing. The octopoidal superstructure was a direct consequence of the all-forward gun layout. By placing the guns forward, critical command and fire control systems also had to be concentrated nearby. Stacking everything upward instead of spreading it along the deck kept the citadel compact and heavily armored. She employed an all-or-nothing scheme, with the thickest armor over the main magazines, barbettes, machinery spaces, and turrets. Her waterline belt sloped outward at about 18 degrees and reached up to 14 inches over her magazines and about 13 inches over her machinery spaces. The armored deck was over 6 inches thick above vital areas, designed to help resist plunging shells from long range. Below the waterline, an internal torpedo protection system of alternating water-filled and air compartments absorbed explosive shocks. Unlike ships with external bulges, Nelson's internal system saved weight and reduced drag, keeping her more efficient in the water. Turrets were heavily armored, 16-inch faces, 11-inch sides, 7.25-inch roofs, and barbettes protected by up to 15 inches of armor. The armored conning tower, where the captain and officers commanded the ship, was equally formidable, ensuring that command could survive even heavy bombardment. Let's dive deeper into Nelson's guns. Each 16-inch gun could fire a 2,048-pound shell at nearly 2,600 feet per second, reaching targets at extreme ranges. The super-firing arrangement of the first two turrets allowed maximum forward fire, while the third turret still contributed to broadside and forward salvos. Super-firing refers to a turret or gun mount that is positioned higher than the one in front of it, so it can fire over the lower turret without obstruction. The turrets were triple mounts, a weight-efficient solution that reduced the number of barbettes required and concentrated armor protection. Reloading mechanisms were carefully designed to allow shells to be loaded at high elevations, keeping the rate of fire competitive for such massive weapons. Nelson's fire control systems were just as advanced. She had two primary director control towers, one on the forward superstructure and another just aft of the main guns. Each had large optical rangefinders, calculating elevation, bearing, and range for the main battery. Every turret had a local rangefinder, allowing it to operate independently if central directors were knocked out. A backup director in the armored conning tower ensured continued coordination under fire. Secondary and AA batteries had their own directors, allowing multiple layers of fire to operate simultaneously. This integration meant Nelson could respond effectively to both surface and aerial threats. Her secondary battery included 12 6-inch guns in six twin turrets along the ship's flanks, providing defense against cruisers and smaller ships. As the threat from aircraft grew in the years leading up to and during World War II, Nelson's designers and engineers had to adapt. When she was refitted in 1940, anti-aircraft guns were added to the roofs of her main turrets, a practical solution that used existing space without adding extra platforms to the superstructure. Initially, she received rocket launchers on B and C turrets, 
but these were soon replaced with more reliable weapons. By the early 1940s, an Arctopal two-pounder pom-pom was mounted atop B turret and 20mm Ehrlichans were installed on C turret's roof, giving these already powerful turrets a new role, defending the ship from aerial attack. Later upgrades added additional Ehrlichans and even quadruple 40mm Beauforts, each controlled through updated fire control radars, ensuring that Nelson could respond effectively to faster, more agile aircraft. Mounting anti-aircraft guns on turret roofs was more than just convenience. It provided a high, unobstructed field of fire, making them some of the most effective points for close-in air defense. For Nelson, a ship designed with strict treaty limits, this clever adaptation shows how innovation didn't stop at her original construction, it continued as her operational environment changed, blending her bold design with practical wartime modifications. Nelson also carried two submerged torpedo tubes, angled outward. These were more of a close-range tactical option than a primary offensive weapon, but they added an extra dimension to her armament. Every design choice in Nelson was a calculated compromise. Her top speed of 23 knots wasn't fast at all, but sufficient, allowing more weight for armor and guns. All guns forward maximized forward striking power but limited firing arcs. Her design was innovative. Nelson is a ship where form followed function, yet she also has a personality, blocky, imposing, aggressive, and unmistakably British. Nelson demonstrates that thoughtful engineering and clever compromises can produce a ship that's both effective in combat and historically iconic. Did you enjoy this short story about HMS Nelson's design? If you want the full story of her war service, make sure to check out the full video on HMS Nelson linked in the description. From the gun decks to the bridge, every story we tell honors those who served. If this tale made you feel the salt and steel of history, give it a like, and if you're not yet part of our channel's convoy, subscribe and join the ranks, more powerful stories await.